This is the print recipe for the golden stone variation of this pattern that will be tied in this video. Using the same materials, you can adjust color combinations to match other stonefly nymphs. Pull back the rear bead and attach the thread just behind the front tungsten bead. Bring in one micro strand of the tan sexy floss, wrap it around the thread, and attach it with several secure wraps. Trim to the desired length, throw in a half inch, and clip your thread. Place a small drop of Zappagap just on the thread at the tie-in point, and slide the rear bead forward. Reattach the thread just behind the rear bead, and bring in a strand of the small tan sexy floss. Wrapping it around the thread and straddling it over the hook shank, wrap rearward to a point that is about an eighth of an inch above the hook point. Clip the tails to the desired length and return the thread to just behind the bead. Catch the tip of the stretch tubing and secure it with about an eighth of an inch worth of snug wraps. Wrap the tubing all the way rearward to the tie-in point of the tail with reasonable tension and return it back to the tie-in point. Secure it with several firm wraps and clip the excess. Wrap the thread back to a point roughly a quarter inch behind the rear bead. I also like to resituate the hook in the vise at this point to ensure that the top portion of the hook is more parallel to my tying surface which will make it easier to finish the fly. I've pre-cut a notch in the thin skin and on each side, about an eighth of an inch down from the tip of the thin skin, I've slightly scored it with my scissors. Secure the thin skin directly behind the rear bead and wrap to the rear until you reach the scored edges of the thin skin. Return the thread forward, fold the thin skin back, and wrap back over the top of it. Placing a small amount of loon swax on the thread Create a sparse dubbing loop with the golden brown ice dub. Once again, your goal here is sparse. It doesn't need to be thick or overly heavy. Once you've closed off the loop and twisted it shut, grab a hold of it with a pair of rotating hackle pliers and set it off to the side. Then bring in the small, pre-knotted, sexy floss legs. I prefer to start with the leg on the side closest to me, but that's a matter of preference. Ensure that the thread wraps cover the entire area of the thorax when securing these rubber legs. If they don't initially go where you want them, give them a wiggle or a twist to get them into the desired position. Once you have the two lateral legs secured, come in on the top middle portion of the thorax and secure the third set of legs. Return the thread just behind the large bead and begin weaving your dubbing loop through the outstretched rubber legs. Once you've reached the back of the rear bead, secure it with a couple wraps and clip the excess. Pulling the thin skin over, Secure it with one wrap. Before securing it with further wraps, give it a good one or two solid tugs to ensure that any slacks, lumps, or humps have been removed from the wing case. Throw down an extra wrap or two and fold it back over the top. Make sure that these last few wraps cover the folded back front portion to ensure that the thin skin will remain folded and pointed toward the rear of the hook. Clip it off to a length of about 3 16 of an inch, whip finish, and clip your thread. After clipping the notches in this front wing bud, feel free to clip the legs to their desired length. Coming in with the UV Hydro Clear Cure, build up the depth and smooth out the taper of the wing buds and the wing case 
coming forward all the way over the joint of the two tungsten beads to give it a nice, smooth, and accurate profile. Cure with UV light, rotate it upside down, hit the same joint on the bottom, and the fly is finished. I also tie this fly in an olive combination size 8 to imitate Squala stone fly nymphs, as well as a size 6 in a rusty brown and a black to imitate salmon fly and giant stonefly nymphs as well.